Thank you all for staying this last, last afternoon. I work with a contemporary dance, so I'm used to a small audience. So I feel completely <laughs> normal. I love that you're here. And thank you, Dance och Cirkushögskolan, for inviting me to the capital. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Ami. I'm a choreographer, dancer, actress, writer, and filmmaker. And since 12 years, I also explore ways of introducing tra traditional Japanese dance techniques into my own practice and to colleagues and students. And I'm currently finalizing a full-length documentary film on the role of dance in Japanese culture. I have worked a lot in Egypt and Japan and also a bit in Melbourne, Australia. I have taught Japanese dance to Egyptian children in German. <laughs> but today, uh, something else, I wish to present a very interesting and challenging educational project that I composed and fighted with for one year, three years ago. So I will start by showing a film, and this film cannot be filmed because I have the students' permission to show it for educational purposes and not to spread it. So no mobile <laughs> filming. So, okay. So I wish to translate to our English-speaking uh, friends that, uh, what the students said. Dance is movement. Dance refreshes the body. Dance is extremely fun. Dance is erotic in attractive terms. Dance is lively. Dance is stressful. Dance sucks and it's boring and suffering. It's not hard for the body. It's psychologically challenging and it sucks. So they got to know it all. They became very wise in this project. They knew everything. So my presentation <coughs> is about teaching difficult dance at the junior high school. And yesterday, he said maybe it's actually called secondary school. It's for the 13-year-olds. So, so I will kind of mix that. So with the development of dance in school and the project uh, Skap and the Skola, creative school in Sweden, there is a need to define dance at school. Why do we need dance at school? Why should we teach dance to students who don't want it? Which dance technique should we choose? And are dance teachers at school to make students happy and physically fit? How can we make dance as relevant as maths and English? And should I, a 44-year-old choreographer, win the students' interest by showing some cool moves? When I was a choreographer in, uh, in residence in this um, town for one year, I encountered, I encountered some difficulties that I wish to share. Uh, I set up a program where I wanted to research dance together with the students. They were allowed to say they hated to dance and they were not forced to dance. I told the students I wished to show them the dance they did not know. I wanted to teach them about the so-called difficult dance that maybe wasn't that difficult. So I danced with them and for them. I invited my colleagues, a dance critic, and we watched dance films together. Also, I created a dance blog for them to follow. Some parts of my program were very successful, some less, and I will try to analyze why. I wish to encourage other dance teachers and choreographers to, uh, involved in dance in school programs to do what I have done. I also argue for the importance of a thorough preparation for such a project. Invited dancers and choreographers need to be informed of and prepared for the unwritten rules and harsh realities of school. School teachers and head teachers need to be prepared and willing to invite dance. How did it all start? I was asked by an art-loving curator in a small, prosperous and scenic place north of Gothenburg to make this project happen. Uh, and this town, I don't have to mention this community, uh, consists of a um, 15,000 inhabitants, and they are more rich than the general Swedish towns, and they have more, fewer immigrants. They have 552 children and two schools uh, with grade 6 uh, to, to 9, and that, that's where I ended up, and it was the first time I taught this age. Um, 
believing school will be an important stage for dance and theater in the future that cannot be ignored. I took the assignment to see if I could make my artistic work more useful and efficient. Two different schools got the assignment to host the project. I met the curator, cur curator the headmasters, the teachers, and finally the students. It all happened a bit too quick. We were very eager to start. Uh, I positioned myself as a choreographer rather than teacher because I thought this would give me the experimental platform I needed. Uh, while composing the schedule, I found support in Monica Lindgren's dissertation, bringing order to aesthetics in school, discursive positioning in discussions with teachers and head teachers from 2006. For example, she describes the development of a static field in school. In the 1940s, it was there to awaken the appreciation of beauty in nature and architecture. In 1960s, for the students to become a responsible, democratic person. In 1994, to for form individuality and uniqueness. In 1999, to form a method in which the answers are not given and where the students own issues form the base of the creative process. In 2005, five, the aesthetic learning processes comment and reflect on qualities in life and the world through the senses and the intellect. And also from the local politi politicians of this um, community and the cu curator, children's health was also mentioned to challenge computer games, overweight and the non-moving body. So, where does the possible resistance for such a project come from? School is pre-choreographed. There is very little time for improvisation. Schedules and space for different activities are very difficult to change. So we must make sure that the project is part of this choreography. Explain why you need space and why you need time. The first term I was lucky. I was scheduled every week with 90 minutes in each class. It was not a lot for me, but for school that was unusual. So time is essential. We were scheduled every week for dance, which also meant scheduled to build respect and understanding. The students finally got used to me. And then we have the space, your space, their space, and the different surrounding spaces. You have the headmaster in her, on his room, the teachers in their bigger staff room, and then the students spread out in the whole building. You just hope you can collect them, that the pre-choreographed schedule will have some effects on their bodies. Then there are the spaces outside, the municipal space, the politician space, the government space, where these kind of projects are decided and financed. A school has very little resources, so by introducing a dance teacher where one, for example, lack a music teacher or an English teacher can be quite problematic. In one school, they wanted a sofa, and instead they got me. So, of course, they were disappointed and angry, and I definitely felt how little they wanted me there. Thus, that knowledge, the sofa knowledge, or the theory of the sofa, helped me defining the circumstances and make myself ready to perform the actions I wish to do. And um, school is a pretty explosive place. It's mandatory, or it's called compulsory. And especially in junior high, secondary school, many students question why they have to be there, why they have to learn what they have to learn, do what they do, their bodies change, their energy level change, their ideas change. So introducing a brand new subject is very risky, but could also be very interesting. Liv Dubesund writes in her Body, Knowledge and Self-Perception -percep from 1995, and this goes for the body in the modern world, but it really makes sense in, in secondary school, I think. The body is no longer as taboo and has become concretized. It is profane and undressed and not mysterious and sealed. The body does not have much to protect itself behind. It becomes exhibited and exposed. Body can also be experienced as absent. We feel alien to it. 
I did not think of unmasking my students' true identities with dance. What really became obvious was that they needed their masks to protect their integrity when exposed to this new subject. Therefore, it was good to give different classes, classes totally with and totally without movements. <laughs> How did I do it? I wanted to uh, introduce a lot of things at the same time because the students' images of what dance could be were few. First, I needed to present and show many examples. The schedule I composed was approved by the curator and the politicians. The schedule was my choreo choreography, my power. And the head teacher could relate to it, a two-dimensional paper with written time on it. That paper was essential. Psychologically, I was borrowing the persona of the smiling warrior. I gave myself very precise notes to be able to handle a day in a place where I was not wanted. I borrowed them from theater training, from building characters on stage. My actions were, make sense. I am your friend. I am normal. I belong. Activity is not always uh, motivated by theory, but theory can analyze activity. I did not use theories per se, but I used art that itself included many different theories, sociology, philosophy, gender theory, post-colonial theory, ethnology, and psychology. I didn't want to just analyze dance from aesthetic values. I wanted my students to see the world in each dance piece. Using art, we watched dance films together, and they met dancers and choreographers from different fields. Uh, where am I? Uh, different disciplines, I meant. Mm, they met a dance critic to talk about how to evaluate the art of dance. We dealt with homophobia, dance from other cultures, site-specific dance, dance in wheelchairs, ballet, dance theater, all that was brand new for them and also for the teachers. In the blog, I prepared them for next class with film clips, photos, texts, and questions. And the teachers, they took part in the project whenever they were scheduled with the group I was teaching. So what would my first class in this project be? Drew Leder writes in The Absent Body from 1990. We are moving from here to there, from the past to the future. Its movements makes us ecstatic in the sense that we come out of ourselves and forget our body. This forgetfulness is essential for us to develop ourselves in the world and relate to the world. To be in the world, we use the body's self-effacing ability. We have to forget it and exceed it. With this in mind, I thought my first class should be an outdoor class of Shaolin Gong Fu, a technique I practiced and loved myself. Everybody loves Kung Fu. There is nothing strange about it, and the boys will not complain. That would help us get physical and forget our bodies and erase the embarrassing self. So I started with an all-inclusive democratic ring the Holy Circle, which was found to be <laughs> a total catastrophe. <laughs> and I was so shocked and not at all prepared of the massive resistance I met. I thought with all my experience and knowledge and my theatrical techniques, I could solve anything. The circle gave no concentration, just shyness inhibitions and total see-through transparency into their private sphere. The girls connected to form a massive anti-movement change. And I worked like a demon conductor, the score flapping in the wind. The notes I tore out flew and fluttered above my head. I feverishly wrote new notes in the middle of the circle, trying to pass those messy stops where embarrassment lies in ambush go straight through embarrassment and into the body. I heard voices in my, head, in my head. Art always changes people. Art is so important. And suddenly I could see the whole Swedish government 
sitting on the beautiful cliffs surrounding the school, and they laughed. They pointed at us and laughed. They laughed at the students who were exposed to this experiment. And then they turned to me and laughed so much that they rolled down the rocks, got hold of my scores and threw it around. How does it feel now, little human being, with your beautiful thoughts on democracy and art? Do you think they work in reality? Do you really think that society needs your knowledge? Running around with weird shoulders and hands, what? They became more and more threatening. Second lesson was better. <laughs> the students moan, but they all end up in some kind of choreographed dynamics. They run, they jump very high with full force across the lawn. They even create their own movements. My lesson has a clear beginning and a clear end. Moments of respect. There between chaos that must be taken care of, I block and release. I use the front bra brakes and I flap. I raise and lower limbs and voice. Afterwards, I am a dried basil plant or a scruffy rosemary without needles. Before going home, I hear, there she is. Two students come up to me and touches me nearly. I think, okay, now I will get beaten up. But one student begins to move his arms and legs and say, I know the movement now. I've been practicing. And opposite him stands the other student. He makes the same movements towards her, and they dance. They make a sort of Asian air tango, and it's just beautiful. So, conclusion after my first lesson. The organization of space is essential. An empty floor or empty lawn will not set people free. The circle is too revealing. So what did I do after the Gong Fu class? I kept going, kept going on with a written schedule. The students got homework, for example, to detect movement in their homes, in school, on the way to school. They watched me dance, they wrote what they saw, I gave them texts about dance, and they answered my questions. Many students wrote they really thought dance was interesting. One student revealed she really liked dance, but was afraid to express it aloud. She secretly, she secretly wrote, that would not be a cool thing to say. Hmm? I have to finish. Really? <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Can I? Yes. Okay. Uh, can I just find an ending? Or yes, uh, I'm almost finished. Uh, so we moved on. We reached new knowledge. We lost it. We struggled, and it was wonderful and painful at the same time. One late night, the headmaster from one of the schools called me and said a parent had called her to threaten the school. The parent wished to forbid his her child to participate in my dance class because dance was thoroughly silly and useless and therefore had nothing to do with school. So this was very uncomfortable and frightening. Now I'm, I'm just, I wanted to, sh to show the terrible things, but um, so <laughs> conclusions, confusions. It wasn't planned that I should be alone in this project. The project had a reference group, but I was always alone in the classroom. We should have anchored the project with the teachers better. We were a bit eager to meet the students, and many teachers gave support, especially the sports and art teachers. Many didn't, of which I was not prepared. But I still think we achieved amazing things. The blog is now a blog for everyone, so I might be the only Swedish paid dance blogger. And the students became very creative and smart. They had a variety of images of dance. They reflected and talked about identity, gender. They became open-minded, and they had fun. So. Uh, Ending with manifesto, claim, time, and space. Make sure they want you and not the sofa. Meet the teachers and ask their expectations. If they don't have any, pick a different school. Stay healthy. Show your anger and sadness. Be honest and naive. Never ever enter these kind of projects alone. This is a command. Share your knowledge.
happened so fast. Okay, thank you very, very much. It was interesting. I'm so sorry that I have to be this person. <laughs> but a few questions or comments. Is there anyone who wants to say something before we... Will you go back? You, you, no. <laughs> Do you want to say something more? Yeah, there's a question. I was just curious if you would go back. Yeah, I'm looking for, yeah. Now I'm busy with other projects, but I learned a lot. Uh, it was a bit too tough, but I learned very much. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, actually, this was not financed by the state. Uh, they had their own money because it's a, it was a rich community. But then because of the election, uh, there was not, um, this project was meant to be for three years, but it ended after one year mm -hmm. because they ran out of money. Do you think this is the way to, to introduce dance to schools? Yes. You think? Yeah. My point of view. <laughs> I don't know if you, you said this, but so what was the school's motivation? Why did they start this project? Uh, that was one of the big issues, that they actually didn't ask for it. It was, uh, they kind of dropped me with a helicopter. Who's uh, they? The government? Uh, the politicians. Oh. Yeah, the local politicians. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. and that's maybe why it became a bit yes. like that. But, yes. um, Still, it happened, and I got to m meet the students and teach yeah, them, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so can relate to what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you.